What kind of a dog is he? A white mini schnauzer. How old was he when you got him? Six years old. What kind of a dog did you get? A cane corso. And he's a big guy? She is a big dog. She's gonna be a big dog. She's only a year old. And how much does she weigh? Like 90 pounds. That's a big dog. Yeah. Miss Davidson, I want you to try to explain to me on what possible theory you believe that you are not responsible for all of these vet bills. What possible theory? Because you appear to be an intelligent woman, he appears to be an intelligent young man. What possible theory, knowing that your dog has a propensity to run across the street, because it's done it before, knowing that it's a 90 pound animal that's unpredictable, knowing that as a result of your son's negligence, the dog was out of the house, not under his control, went on the plaintiff's property, bit their dog, which they incurred hundreds of dollars in vet bills. You tell me what possible excuse you can have for not paying the vet bills. Well, when I spoke to Miss Dunlap about the incident that happened when her husband approached me in a very negative way, and it was beyond my control because I was outside at the time, like he said that I was... Just to say you were outside, but it's your dog. It's not his dog. It's your dog. It's our dog. No, it's your dog. How old are you? 25. What do you do for a living? I'm a student right now. It's your dog. You pay for it, you feed it, you provide all the food for it, but he's a student. It's your dog, it's your responsibility. He's in your house. His negligence is your negligence. I mean, if you have homeowner's insurance, do you? Yes, I do. Well, does your homeowner's insurance policy cover this kind of incident? No. Did you report to your insurance company when you got this dog? No. Where do you live? I live in Missouri. But when Miss Taylene went to call the animal control on my dog after we had discussed the fact of trying to work something out during that time. Is that dog on the vicious list? Yes. In Missouri? Generally, it depends by insurance company, but there's a list of generally blacklisted high-risk animals and a cane course. Well, the animal control... Just, just let me explain to you. Just so that you know, do you own your house? No. Do you own property? Do you have money in the bank? Yes. Yes. You have to have renter's insurance. I do. Good. You better tell them that you have a dog that's on the high risk list in the state where you live. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Otherwise, if God forbid that dog, which has already been out at least twice that I know about, hurts somebody else, they're going to take away everything you have. Well, not a well. I'm telling you, this I is not a. I this understand. is not a well. I this understand. Is, I'm telling you exactly what you're saying. When the dog patrol came to my house and she said what she had told her that my dog was vicious and she came to see it my is dog. vicious. My dog's not vicious. Of course I it's don't vicious. Think vicious. It came across the street and it attacked their animal that was on their property. And if a child had been outside screaming or crying or laughing in the backyard and for some reason your dog didn't like the pitch of that and ran across the street, which it has done so far as I know two times, maybe more, but I know of at least two times, then that dog is potentially vicious. Well, my dog's around kids all the time. I have to tell you this, madam. Mm -hmm. They put dogs on a potentially vicious list for a reason. So insurance companies have compiled lists of those dogs, and there are hundreds of registered breeds of dogs. The list of potentially vicious dogs is relatively short, 10. 12 out of hundreds. If you choose to have one of those dogs and that dog has already injured somebody or something, a living thing, they are absolutely not only within their rights, it's almost a public service and a mandate for them to report it to animal control. You know, I used to do another program. On the desk of that program, I had articles and letters people sent to me who complained that they thought I was being unfair to a particular breed of dog. And I remember one letter that was by a man whose grandchild, only grandchild, was mauled by a pit bull. And he said to me in the letter, I was the last person my son called to tell me that my five-year-old grandchild had been mauled by the dog because I had been begging them to get rid of the dog. And they said, the dog is a sweet dog. The dog loves the boy turned in a minute. And when my Shih Tzu decides that it doesn't like me and wants to nip me or a child, it gets a nip. But when a 90 pound dog decides to turn, it can kill you.
So you have to make sure that there's no negligence so that it's not out of your control. And you don't cop an attitude because they called animal control. How much were your vet bills? I believe 705.88 to be exact. 705.88, judgment for the plaintiff. We're done here.